Video games are magical things. They can take us to fantastic places, make us feel like heroes, open our minds to new ways of thinking, and open our hearts to the friends we make along the way. However, in this modern world, there are so many distractions pulling us hither and thither. Our lives and our families and our jobs and our social media and other distractions. If only there was an antidote to the modern slog, a cure to the curse of modernity. Oh dear me, my mistake, there is. Welcome my friends to the Dusty Games Society. We are a group of like-minded retro gaming enthusiasts who are fed up with the direction that modern games have taken. We yearn for the simpler days. These are the games that call to us the Dusty Games. I shall tell you more about the DGS at the end of the video, but first, we have some important work to do. The Dusty Games Society has been busy last month exploring one of the greatest RPGs ever. A timeless classic that is not only a dusty piece of gaming history, but a game that is just as fantastic today as it was when it was released nearly 30 years ago. Let's now take a trip back in time to the mid-1990s, to the era of Chrono Trigger. Oh man, where to start with this game? This is my first time playing it. I had heard a lot of good things. Lots of people say it's one of the greatest games ever made, and in the past I'd play it for maybe an hour and then get distracted by a different game or a squirrel outside my window and then I'd forget about it. But I knew deep down that I needed to play this. That's why I chose this as the Dusty Game Society a Game of the Month. Obviously lots of the Dusty Game Society members had played this before, but it was new for lots of them too. Some of them reliving a story from their childhood and others, like me, ex experiencing this special game for the first time. It's so freaking good, you guys. You have no idea. Actually, you probably do, but if you don't, then shut up and listen. I'm going to approach this review as a Chrono Trigger noob, someone who's played through the game once, but I certainly haven't seen all that the game has to offer. <laughs> Not by a long shot. And also, I'm going to make this review basically spoiler-free, because the story is amazing and it deserves to be able to surprise you. So, you play as Chrono. About a guy, an anime guy. He looks like this. <laughs> this is your character. No customization or anything, although you can name him whatever you want. It's the story of Chrono, but he's very one-dimensional and he has no real personality of his own. He's more or less a silent protagonist. This story is more about the people that he meets. It's about their stories, the stories of all the colorful companions that you team up with and about the world itself, all the stuff that's going on. The story starts in the Kingdom of Guardia in the year 1000 AD. Chrono is just doing his thing, living with his mom like a proper dweeb, visiting the fair, making new friends, when some stuff happens and a portal rips open the fabric of time and yep, you guessed it, now you gotta save the world. You gotta go back in time to save your friend and then some stuff happens and then you gotta go forward and then it turns out that the stuff in the past affected the present so you gotta go back and fix it and then you go to the distant future and find out some more stuff affects that so you gotta go back and forth between the present and the past and the future and even back to like caveman times because there's some stuff back then too. The actual tone of the story is super lighthearted. We're talking 9 out of 10 on the adorable scale. The characters are so happy-go-lucky. They just want to do good in the world. They want to fix what's gone wrong. The themes of the characters' interactions are helping each other out, lifting each other up. It's frankly refreshing to play a game like this where it's not all doom and gloom full of a bunch of angsty, troubled protagonists. Looking at you, Final Fantasy. I wanted to spend time with each one of these adorable sprites just because they made me genuinely like them and want to help them with what they had going on. And that's a big part of the game, building a team of heroes to deal with the catastrophic stuff, but each hero has their own sort of quest line associated with them. I've heard it described as being similar to Mass Effect 2, where you're building your dream team to take on the Reapers, and that's not far off. And similar to Mass Effect 2, you have a big team of people, but you can't take them all with you at once. You can only have a party of three. It's always Chrono and two friends. And each character has their own unique skills and attacks and items that 
that work well for them, their own strengths and weaknesses. And a hugely important aspect to your team composition is the skill synergies, because each different combo of characters can do different stuff together. The skills are called tech, which of course put a smile on my dweeby face. So maybe one character has a spin attack tech and another has a heal tech and together they can learn to do a spin heal that heals everyone at once. And there's even triple tech combos where all three characters contribute to a huge effect. And right through the game, even right up to the end, as you level up, you'll be learning new techs that give you new options in combat. It's simple, but it grows in depth without ever getting complicated. The battles play out on the actual world map, which is not a common thing with RPGs of this era. You'll be walking along and you can try to avoid enemies by sneaking around them, but either because you've encountered them or because you get ambushed when a fight breaks out, all the enemies and characters all spread out and battle it out right there in the world map. The combat is turn-based, but it's also time-based, so you have to be quick in choosing your attacks or waiting for different party members to be ready so you can pull off your combo tech stuff before the enemies get their chance to do bad stuff. And the boss battles. Oh my gosh, there are some seriously cool and unique boss battles in this game. I, I won't spoil them because they're fun to discover yourself, but you'll see what I mean when you play them. Each boss has different strengths and weaknesses and special strategies that you need to figure out. Some have multiple body parts that you need to hit for instance, some have different phases, some you'll need to use text or magic or a certain elemental power. I didn't find the game particularly hard. I rarely had a fight that made me worried that I wouldn't make it through, and apart from one or two battles that I didn't know I needed a specific elemental damage type or whatever, I didn't have any TPKs. The game is perfectly paced. I was never bored or felt that I needed to grind when I just wanted to get on with the story. There are always new locations and story events to pull you along, and the, the engagement is genuine. This was probably the thing that I appreciated the most. I wanted to pick this game up and play it throughout the day because I really wanted to figure out this mystery or get my friends through a struggle they were facing or to explore the nooks and crannies of this new area. Speaking of which, there is a ton of extra stuff to do in this game. If you're the type of gamer where you want to focus and just plow through the main story, you could totally do that. But if you're the kind of gamer that wants to go off the beaten path and look for secrets or side quests, then you'll find a lot of extra stuff around the world that you wouldn't have seen if you didn't poke around. The game has multiple endings too, so I hear. Lots of the talk in the dusty halls of the Dusty Game Society this month was about which ending people got. I think I got a pretty basic, normal ending as far as I could tell, but I really want to replay the game, not only to try to find a different ending, but also because there's a New Game Plus mode where you can restart the game with your powered up characters. And also the combo of which characters you had with you at certain parts can change a few of the story dialogue things, and also the battles can feel drastically different as well. Depending on who you have with you uh, during those parts of the story. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned the art. This game is freaking amazing looking. Lots of games from this era haven't aged well, lots of them look pretty good, but this is one of, if not the best looking games from the Super Nintendo that I've ever seen. There is a ton of attention to detail in the world. Everything from the map, to the buildings, to the dungeons, to the character animations, and the soundtrack. I actually listened to this with headphones on and never once did I get bored of hearing the same tune over and over. I just, I, I love it. I, I love this game so much. Now that I've played it through, I can really see why it's one of the all-time classic games. It's one of those games that has all these elements that work really good on their own. And there's so many good aspects that when it comes together, it feels great as a whole. It's not perfect. And, and as much as I enjoyed it, I wouldn't say that I love it more than lots of the amazing modern games that I've played in the last few years, but it has aged very well. And I can see why it was not only so groundbreaking at the time, but also why it has stood the test of time. It's a timeless story story of time travel that deserves your time and attention. So dust off your retro handheld of choice and prepare to go back to the future, make some friends, make some enemies, high five a frog, and bust a move with some cavemen. And there you have it my friends, an important game in the history of games and a delightful game to play today. Let's see what some of the members of the DGS had to say about Chrono Trigger this month, shall we? Empty Vessel says, game's good. I didn't play it though because I was 
too busy still playing Picross. Oh, um, okay. Well, at least we got a picture of a kitty cat. Majin Shinsa says, finished three quarters of the game. Game is just as fun as I remember from my childhood and is one of the better RPGs on the Super Nintendo. Yes, indeed. Lots of great RPGs on the SNES, and this is absolutely one of the best. Crystal says, lovely pixel graphic and cute characters. How can you not love Frog and Robo? Ah yes, Frog is a fun little chap, isn't he? But my personal dream team is Robo and Ayla, because I always wanted a robot for a friend, and I've always had a thing for cave girls. Gordo's Taco Shop says, Chrono Trigger is quickly becoming a new favorite for me. This is the first RPG I've experienced that didn't feel like a chore to play at times. The pacing was nearly perfect, and filler is nearly non-existent. Yes, 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 the perfect pacing is what kept me going as well. Lots of modern games could learn a thing or two from this game, wouldn't you agree? Justin Mann says, This playthrough was the best ever because I got to do it with this community. Thanks for the extra incentive and bringing us all together for this one. Didn't know how much I needed it. And I couldn't agree more, Justin Man. It's been a delightful way to play a delightful game with delightful dusty dweebs like you around. Shade, uh, Shade uh, says, I absolutely loved revisiting this after not playing it in probably 15 years. Oh god, has it been that long? Beautiful music, gorgeous art style, and a timeless story. Also, Ayla Best Girl. Yes, Ayla Best Girl. Best girl indeed. Rixba says, Frog. Uh, th th thank thanks for your thoughts on that, R Rixba. Ayanami says, Chrono Trigger is honestly the one game that changed the course of history, pun intended, for console gaming. It set a new standard for pacing, tone, theme, player choice, style, music, and much more. The game respects the player's time and efforts. I've never seen anything that has had the same level of impact to the industry. I couldn't have said it better myself, my friend, except that I did but I had a whole video to do it. But your description is a close second. <laughs> the Dusty Games Society is a group of like-minded retro gaming enthusiasts who vow to discover great games of bygone days. We play the games together, and it's my job to share our discoveries with you so that you can take part and play the games that we've played yourself. The Dusty Games Society is comprised of members of the TechTweep community who have earned a place at the Dusty table to play Dusty Games with me. How did I pick these privileged few? Simple. They are my patrons. Every month I post the game we'll play, and then we play it. And we, we talk about it all month long. Our trials and tribulations. It's like a book club for retro games. And if you'd like to become one of the proud few who have elected to support the important work that I do, and as a side bonus take part in the Dusty Game Society each and every month, there's a link down there in the description below. But regardless of whether you join the DGS or not, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip back in time to take a look at Chrono Trigger, and feel free to share your thoughts about this dusty game with the rest of the not as dusty but still pretty dusty dweebs in the comments below, and I hope you'll join us next time. Until then, stay dusty my friends.